My name is Jamie Banks and I'm from New Plymouth. Uh, as you can see, I'm a little bit Asian and actually I thought I was half Chinese up until I was about 22 years old and then I found out I was actually quarter Chinese and quarter Spanish. So that was a bit of a revelation. I was a really happy child and, and life was pretty exciting and I uh, had lots of friends. And then probably around the time of uh, year 11, so I was about 15 years old, I started to head down a pretty slippery slope of negative thinking and negative feelings and um, within a year or so I was actually at the point where I'd be too scared to, to call my friends on the phone. So I sort of had a big religious confusion, I had issues about how I looked, um, the, the love life thing wasn't happening at all, you know, sporting success completely disappeared, academic success was, was really uh, not what it had been as well. So there's a whole lot of things together at the same time which was quite difficult for me to deal with but I think it's how I responded to that that made it even worse you know I mean those things were bad enough for me at the time you know I think that with depression it's very normal to think that it's just not going to end I think um, if you've got a kind of depression where that's not the case you're probably one of the lucky few so um, you know, I think in some people's cases it's it's a few weeks, in some people it's a few months where they just they just can't um, see themselves ever ever getting out of it. In my case, it was eight years, and it was it was horrible. Like I I I wanted to wish myself out of existence, really. Perhaps the one thing that that uh, kept me going or made me think that things would be better was you know once I got a girlfriend. That was. That was huge uh, for me, like I thought, as, as soon as I get a girlfriend, you know, the depression will go, it's just, you know, just the fate of a single man to feel this way sort of thing. Um, but I was really in, in denial because that wasn't, that was never going to be the answer because again, I just, when I did have a relationship, I brought that same negative mindset to it. I just kind of enjoyed going to sleep at night because I, I wanted to get away from the real world and, and you know at least when you, you fall asleep there's a possibility you might have an exciting dream kind of thing but but yeah in the real world it was just I, I just hated being alive to be honest yeah. It took me to be honest a few years to actually realize that you know something bigger was going on here that I needed other people's advice and help on. Um, I, I think um, a, f a couple of friends just said, why don't you see a counsellor kind of thing. And at first I was just like, you know, no, I don't, I don't need a counsellor, you know. Um, I know myself better than anyone else. I know how to deal with it. I mean, of course I didn't, but that's what I thought. So w once I got to university, um, I started to see different counsellors. And then I guess, you know, once you uh, learn new things, you realise what you've been missing out on, you know, you think, gosh, I could have learned this earlier. On the other side, you have to be careful, I think, not to, to rely on the counsellor to solve your problems, because that's, that's not their job. And, and I think it's easy to fall into that trap of, you know, I've done the hard work of making the appointment, now I'll let the counsellor do the work. But, you know, you have to really um, make sure you apply what you learn. That's a really big part of it. I had a couple of other friends who just were, were quite inspirational in the sense that they just they just kept listening and listening and listening and that and that showed me you know how to be non-judgmental about someone how to be encouraging um, and and occasionally you know I probably had some people who wouldn't necessarily call friends but they're quite frank about you know their thoughts about how I was how I was and and they they were quite helpful as well in the sense that they weren't afraid to to tell me where they thought you know, I needed to, to back my ideas up or to, you know, to be more proactive. The turning point for me was a slightly unusual one, I suppose. I'd, I'd fallen in love with a girl who I thought was the answer to all my emotional worries. And for probably a month, I'd say, I was completely free of any negative feeling about myself and life because um, we actually got along so well that Believe it or not, she asked me to marry her within within a month, which is not your traditional way of doing things. But um, but within about <clears throat> two to three months, things you know the old 
Jamie came back and uh, I, again, there's all these doubts. And as soon as the doubts creep in, then of course that affects the way you relate to people and then you have more reason for doubts and then, and, you know, so on. That vicious circle came right back straight away. Um, and it wasn't until 